All right, welcome to the Krug Show. Wednesday night, April the 3rd, 741 on the West Coast, 1041 on the East Coast. Hope everybody's having a great day. Beautiful day here in Northern California. Wednesday night means we're going call-in show with Kev. That's right. Kev down at Cal Poly. And we're gonna we're going to uh, do a little call in show right here. Kev will put the link in the uh, description, and you can get involved. But of course, we always first go with a few questions from Kev to me to get us rolling. But we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check out check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. Uh, they're open seven days a week. There's also an event at Sweetwater in Mill Valley on Saturday and Pig and a Pickle will be sponsoring, will be, uh, will be uh, not sponsoring, but making the food for the event at Sweetwater. Uh, Jake Peavy's in town and Tim Flannery's in town. They're going to be playing some music at Sweetwater in, in Marin. And who's going to be providing the food? That's right. Damon and Mary, the owners of Pig and a Pickle. So go nice. check that out Saturday night. I may do it myself. I may hop out to Sweetwater and see my man Winnie, who owns Sweetwater, and maybe watch a little music. So we'll see. Uh, that coming up this weekend. And, of course, we're also brought to you by Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles. Check them out in Pacific Grove. Call Anthony Catania. He's at 831-521-5264. We're brought to you by Marin Auto Glass. MarinAutoGlass.com, 415-883-3030. If you shatter a windshield, you need a new one. Marin Autoglass can help you out. Absolutely. And don't forget, Underdog Fantasy. Check the link in the description. Use the promo code KRUG, K-R-U-E-G, and they will match you up to your first $100. What's up, Kev? How's Wednesday going in uh, San Luis? Abyssal? You know, it's uh, it was a little cloudy today. I don't know what it was like in the Bay, but it was a little cloudy here in the central Central California. Uh, it was pretty nice yesterday. Weather's nice, but today not not so much. But uh, I'm excited to talk Niners. I feel like we got a few things we got to talk about. Uh, Do we? Even All though right, even away. though it's uh, April third, and we're what uh, twenty three days? What? Yeah, three, three or four weeks, weeks, away, weeks from away from the draft. draft. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. where do you want to start? Well, <clears throat> even though I just mentioned the draft. I kind of want to start with just the NFL news of the day. And the, the NFL news of the day was that Stephon Diggs was traded. Uh, the four-time that. Pro Bowler was traded to the Texans uh, along with a six-round pick of this year's draft for a fifth-round pick and a second-round pick in next year's draft. Uh, so not that's, very, kinda, not yeah, a very that's where I want to start. For Stephon Diggs, huh? When you look at the Stephon Diggs trade, Stephon Diggs and a sixth round pick for a second round pick and a fifth round pick next year. Where, what is that? What's what what's happened to the NFL trade market? If you look at the trades that's that's happened this offseason, you had Legarius Sneed, who was traded for a 2025 third and a seventh round pick swap this year. Hassan Reddick was traded for a, a 2026 third round pick. Um with the recent trades and just the overall trade market, what what do you think about an IU trade? Does that lower his value? What do you think that it's an apples to apples comparison? Is it not? What's your what's your take on the IU trade possibility after the Stefan Diggs trade this morning? Well, as far as the possibility, I don't know about the possibility. Um, you know, as far as it, whether it's going to happen or not. But they're not the same players. I mean, they're not we're, and they're not at the same stage of their career. Um, Stefan Diggs is a really good player, but Stefan Diggs is, is 30 years old. Ayuk's like 26 or 25. He's a, he's five years younger. He's got much more, much more of a prime. Ayuk also was an all pro receiver this year. He's coming into his own, his best. I think you could argue that Stefan Diggs has already played his best football and he's on the downside. So, you know, Ayuk on the other hand, I think is, his best football is still coming. And so um, I don't, you know, I personally, um, I understand what you're saying. It's it's not a high trade value for, for digs. Um, but, what, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Uh, we'll see what people want as far as Ayuk. But I think Ayuk's, Ayuk in some ways is, um, 
is a better play because I mean, you know, Diggs is a four time pro bowler, but he's 30. And as I said, he's played his best ball. Uh, as far as, you know, Buffalo, I, you know, I think that also kind of makes Buffalo possibly a team that may trade for Iuke. Yeah, I was thinking um, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, they've got Josh Allen and look at their receivers right now Curtis Samuel, uh, Khalil Shakir, Justin Shorter, Mac Hollins, Andy Isabella. KJ Hamler. I mean, they, they don't have a guy. So maybe Buffalo, who has what, the 28th pick or something like that. Uh, maybe Buffalo could be a team that trades for Ayuk. But yeah, I, I, I do think it's if you're gonna take on a player in his 30s in the NFL, you're not getting a lot for him. You're just not. There aren't too many guys in their 30s that are gonna command big, big uh big coin or even, you know, big draft pick compensation. You look at Ayuk, Ayuk is a player who, you know, he's 26. He's 26. His best football is coming up right here. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, so I'm not saying that Ayuk's going to be traded. I don't know, but I think Ayuk is definitely going to command a bigger price tag than Diggs. Yeah. Looking into the Ayuk's, Ayuk versus Diggs, Diggs is 30. He's definitely, you know, he's coming on the other side of of his peak. You know, he's peaked and he's he's coming down from his peak, in my opinion. Uh, the interesting thing about him is that he has an opt out of his contract next season, but he could potentially be playing for the Houston Texans on a nineteen million dollar cap hit for the next four seasons if he opts into the, the next three seasons of his deal, uh, which is pretty cheap uh, considering that you know Ayuk is playing on the last year of his of his contract. And he's looking for you know upwards of twenty five million for his deal. Um, it's yeah, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but I just think the most surprising thing about this whole thing is just looking at how the trade market has just fallen off in the last few years. I mean, just looking back at past trades, like or like this this off season, Justin Fields was traded for a six round draft pick. Trey Lance was traded for a fourth. Trey Lance never played. Justin Fields has proved at least something. You know, he's actually won games. Trey Lance hasn't done anything in the NFL, and they got him for a fourth round pick. And then going back, you know, AJ Brown was traded for a first and a third, uh, and now Diggs, you can only get a second from him or a a third, or no, a second and a fifth. I mean, so yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Ayuk, though, by a lot of measures, a lot of advanced metrics, was the best receiver in the NFL, and I think. You know, he actually can pr provide a huge difference to a team. And I think his trade value is much higher than Diggs. But, you know, it's definitely just a little bit of an eye opener to the people that think, you know, you could get like two ones for, for a Uke or something crazy like that. You're not going to be able to get that. But no. I, I think you could still get a one for a Uke. I think there's a one out there for Ayuk for sure. Uh, his stats this year, he made 75 catches over 1300 receiving yards. Only seven touchdowns, but seventeen point nine yards per per catch. Um, you know, I, I you know, interesting. Mike Sando Sando from uh, ESPN or from the Athletic, I guess, formerly of ESPN, um, wrote an article and he talked to some anonymous NFL executives, and um, he. This is the quote from the anonymous exec and what they told Sando. They said, Ayuk is so integral to what they do, more so than Debo is, that I'd try to get something done with Ayuk before Justin Jefferson and these other receivers get deals and the price goes up. Because this is a deep receiver draft. They may try to do it in reverse. If there is something they can get done from a draft standpoint, then it could be moving Ayuk or knowing their feet are to the fire and they have to extend him. So, you know, really kind of you makes you wonder about what we're going to find. I mean, uh, in the in the in the month ahead, I think there's a reading the tea leaves. I would say that the 49ers may tr may sign a guy like Tyler Boyd um, and trade Ayuk on draft day um, and, and, and depending on who's on the board and what they can get in return. They obviously have certain players they want uh, in return. You know, if you could turn Ayuk into um, a pick in the 20s or something like that and save all the money. I mean, I don't think people realize that you're 
paying Brock Purdy a million dollars. Now you're going to have to pay Brock Purdy $50 million. Yeah. So you're going to have to make really, really tough decisions. And people are like, well, you know, Eric Armstead. Okay. So he's gone. That's one. Um, but then it's like, oh, well, then Debo. I, you know, who's going to stick around, Debo or Ayuk? I'm getting the the picture that it could be neither, that they could trade Ayuk this year and trade Debo next year. So I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Um, I do think he's integral to what they do. I do think he's Purdy's number one guy. It would be a huge risk to move him. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's a deep receiver draft. You still could find receivers in free agency. And you're going to have to bite the bullet and cut somewhere. Who are you going to cut? Trent Williams? No. You're going to cut Nick Bosa? No. Uh, you know, maybe George Kittle, but yeah. they don't have another tight end. I mean, it just seems like the receivers are the easiest guys to cut because or trade at some point because there's so many receivers in the draft. Like they could stay at 31 and probably pick Xavier Leggett or Leggett from uh, South Carolina. He's pretty nice, you know, and there's other receivers um, in this draft that are damn good, too. So um, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting month for sure. There's definitely all not. I would, yeah. say is, all I would say to Niner fans is, you know, don't get in this mode where, oh, there's no way they're they yeah. can move Debo yeah, yeah. and Ayuk because there is a way. And um, and Ayuk would probably yeah. wind up moving first. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's there's a cut and dry answer to this IU problem, and that's kind of the reason why we're having all these discussions about it is because you know they could they could go both ways. I think what they want to do is keep IU, and I I know all the fans want to keep IU, and I want to keep IU, but you know you run into some logistical problems like uh, David Lombardi, who does a great job, love David Lombardi. Uh, he, I think he wrote an article kind of breaking down his, you know, what he would anticipate for a contract extension for Brandon Ayuk. Um, and you can just kind of see where the flaws are in terms of, or not the flaws, but the the issues with ex extending Brandon Ayuk if they did that. If you look at uh, the way that he, he stru structured the contract, he has the cap hit for the first three years being extremely low, which is probably due to, you know, Debo still being on the roster and a few other contracts that are pretty expensive. And then he has the last two years of the contract having a cap hit of like 40 and then 50 million. I mean, that's, that's an, that's an enormous number, 40 or $50 million cap hit. I mean, th right now the 49ers are taking on a $28 million cap hit for Debo Samuel. And they're feeling, they're feeling that this year. Imagine if that was 40 or $50 million. So it's definitely something they have to consider, you know, taking on a huge contract like that. And when you have to pay Brock Purdy, it's going to change the dynamic of your team, the roster building. So it's a huge decision. And that's why, you know, it's not the it's not the Nick Bosa decision or it's not the Nick Bosa, you know, contract extension where when someone asked him, are you going to trade Nick Bosa? He's like, no, we're not trading Nick Bosa. We're not like he, he didn't entertain that for a second. I mean, obviously, John Lynch, when he's asked about Brandon Ayuk, is going to say he loves him because he does. But he's not going to like lower his trade value or make it apparent that they want to move on from him. So in my opinion, they're going to, they're going to look at all the options. Uh, I would prefer to keep Ayuk. I'm sure the 49ers would prefer to keep Ayuk, but you know, you have to look at these things because of the, the contracts and the money to cap league. Well, and the way it's set up, the way they've talked about it, the way it's been reported by Ian Rappaport and some of the other NFL network guys that the Niners are going to wait until after the free agent signing period is over. Well, yeah, wait until um, Justin Jefferson makes over $30 million a year and Ayuk's coming off an all-pro season. I don't know that that's wise, you know? I mean, for the Niners, it might be wise for Ayuk's maximizing his his uh, ability to make money. I don't know that that's a wise maneuver for the Niners. I mean, why would you want to wait? Wait until the market resets at a higher level and then pay your guy at the highest level. Well, that's a great idea from... Ayuk's perspective. I don't know that that's a great idea from the Niner perspective. In fact, I know that it's not. So, you know, I just look at this draft and I say, okay, you know, um, I love Brandon Ayuk and all Niner fans do and, or should, let's just say, all right, let's, let's talk about the receivers that could be there at the end of round one. So Harrison's going to be gone. Malik Neighbors is going to be gone. Roma Dunze is going to be gone. 
Brian Thomas Jr. is probably going to be gone. Uh, Thomas Jr., though, if you could get a pick in the teens, might be a great replacement for Ayuk. Okay, then there's Troy Franklin, not a big fan of him. Lad McConkey, two touchdowns in his career. But Adonai Mitchell could be there, 6'3", 190 from Texas. Um, Xavier Leggett could be there from South Carolina. Malachi Corley, who they went, sent a big contingent to go watch him. I think there's a very good chance he could be there. Or they could wait until later on and maybe draft Luke McCaffrey and maybe draft uh, um, you know, some of the other guys that are available. Javon Baker from Central Florida, Brendan Rice from uh from usc um you know so there's you know it's not like there's there's no receivers and then when that's just the 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 main receivers there's also slot receivers like malik washington who i love from virginia ania smith from a&m really good player um you know so there's there's just there's a there's a number of receivers in this draft that they could go with and uh, there's a number of free agent receivers still out there. So it's not like, hey, if they traded Ayuk, they, they may not be able to find an Ayuk. But at the end of the day, I mean, Ayuk had three targets in each of the three playoff games. So are we, you know, is is Ayuk, were they really utilizing Ayuk anyway? I do agree that he's a valuable piece of the puzzle. That's why I think you could go and get a first round pick for him. But, um, you know, the money situation is real. Yeah. You know, absolutely real. Yeah. They're not the Los Angeles Dodgers. You know, they can't just, they can't just pay, they can't spend a billion dollars in free agency. And it's a hard you know. cap. Yeah. It's a hard cap. Uh, in terms of the draft, I mean, I have Fred says, Larry, did you once have hair like that? And I'm like, uh, not quite that, not that quite that bushy. Um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it, it's, you know, I definitely had a, had a curlier mop top. Uh, as a young as a youngin, but Kev also takes some hair genes from from his mother, so she's got the she's got the <laughs> thick hair. Kev, can we can you can you put your fingers through it a, a few times so we can really take a look at the the thickness that is Kevin Krueger's. It's, not, it's all real. It's all real. <laughs> look at that thing. I mean, I, I'm still second, I'm still thick. second in the game to Guy Haberman. I mean, that guy's just yeah, God, that's a right. to your hair. <laughs> it's wall to wall carpet. <laughs> um, right. Anyways, I w- let's move on from the IU talk. I'm sure people have okay. heard enough of that. Um, some news from the 49ers today. Patrick Taylor Jr., the running back, was signed uh, by the 49ers. He's an interesting signing. He's 25 years old. He's huge. He's six foot two, 217 pounds. Uh, in college, you know, I, I I looked into this a little bit. In college, he was involved in the passing game and the blocking game uh, for Memphis. He was an interesting player in college. Uh, for the Packers last season, he played 240 snaps, which was by far the most in the three seasons he's been in the NFL. He had 35 rush attempts, averaged 4.2 yards per carry. Uh, he runs a 4.5740, so he's not blazing fast. To me. He's really just a big back who, you know, he, he's a complimentary back. I don't think he's, you know, anything real special. He's not quick. He's not super quick. But um, I think he's a piece in the room, maybe a special teamer. Maybe he'll have some uh, involvement in the new kickoff rules. I'm not sure how it's going to how it's going to play out. Um, definitely not uh, your, you know, bell cow NFL starting running back. But uh, he's definitely an addition. He's, he's a piece. Uh, what did you think of the signing? Well, I, I don't know. I, I really don't know a lot about him. I mean, he signed as an undrafted free agent. He played at Memphis. Uh, he was part of a committee. He's never been like the bell cow back anywhere. He wasn't the every down back at Memphis. He has never been an every down back with the pack. He, he is pretty yoked up. I will say that. Um, uh, he's one of those guys that's got a pretty impressive physique. He played 226 snaps. Um in 2023 and he set career highs in rushes and catches. I played in the playoff game against, um, against the 49ers. I did. I don't remember watching him. So, I mean, uh, we'll see. I mean, I, you know, there's nothing, I, he's not unseating anybody, but it does make you wonder if now that 
makes it where they could trade one of their backs. Could they trade Elijah Mitchell? Could they trade a JP Mason? Um, could they use this guy as a partial fullback? Is he part of the return game? I don't know. I'm, I am I really don't know what to say. Pretty athletic. I, I saw he runs kind of upright, though. He takes yeah. shots to his sternum. So that never really bodes for, you know, long-term durability in the NFL if you run upright. But there's there's he's definitely athletic. He's definitely powerful. Um, I'll be eager to see what he looks like this summer. Uh, I saw that he had a Liz Frank injury, and I'm not sure if that still bothers him, but I know that that's one of those lingering ish, uh, injuries, right, Liz Frank? Well, it's it's on the base of the foot, and it can be. It can be a really bad injury. It doesn't sound like they gave him the kind of money, though, where it's like, oh, man, they can't cut this guy. You know, they definitely could cut him, it sounds like, and get out of it real, you know, cheaply. But we'll see. Obviously, it's a back that they like. Um you know how, how what, who likes them? What role do they envision? Uh, it's hard to say. I I will say this: when you watch some of his highlights from college, he there's some there is some excitement there. I mean, he's he's not like this guy's a total nobody, but at the same time, you got McCaffrey, you got Mitchell, you got Mason, you got Juice. I'm not sure where he fits in. Yeah, I I, th- I saw the the college highlights, but I I wasn't really impressed. It was more of like a it felt more of like a highlight reel of someone who would do well in college, but not in the NFL. If that makes sense. Like yeah. he, he had some of these breakaways where I'm like, there was just no one there. Um, yeah. I mean, they use him in the passing game. They use him as a blocker. Maybe they see some traits that they like with him, but yeah, nothing too exciting uh, from my end on that. Uh, last topic here before we go to the call. So if you guys want to join in the call, the call link is in the chat. We'll take calls in about, five minutes or so uh the last news of the day that i wanted to hit on that you probably have talked about already um is the lions matched the offer for brock Wright, the tight end uh three year 12 million dollar contract that the 49ers offered him about five days ago and the lions had till today to match that offer and they did so no more brock Wright. So that kind of leads me to what what is what are the Niners going to do at the tight end position? Uh, what do you think about their room? I mean, I know they have Dwelly's Dwelly is not resigned, so Dwelly's off the roster. We were kind of guessing that this was the Dwelly replacement. Um, if they went in the draft, who would you go after? If they're what are the remaining free agents tight ends that you like? What what do you see them doing with this room? I like Robert Tanyan Jr., who played with Green Bay, then played with Chicago. Will um, Kittle's a big fan of his. He went to tight end U in in uh, Tennessee. Uh, I think Tanyan would be a nice one, nice option. The other guy I kind of like is Bryson Hopkins, who played for the Rams. He's kind of a little bit more of a receiver. Um, but I think that the Niners will definitely look into the draft for a tight end. I like Mason Pline as a day three sleeper out of Furman. Um, basketball player who's six, eight, really athletic, uh, mechanical engineering major, 10 inch hands. I really like him. I also kind of like the Arizona, uh, tight end, uh, as a Tanner McLaughlin, I believe from uh, university of Arizona coach really likes, um, the Florida state tight end. It's a, it's an interesting tight end group. I think, uh, the UNLV kid is kind of a little bit of a sleeper as well. Zeon, the third. Um, but yeah, the lions, you know, it's funny. Grant Cohn in our stream Monday said that he felt like the lions would match and sure enough, you know, the Niners kind of did their negotiating for them three years, 12 million, 6 million guaranteed. Um, I think the Ford Niners just found a player that they really had good grades on and thought had some upside potential and, um, and tried to sneak them out of the, out of the lion's barn. And the lions said, Hey, you know what? We kind of like him too. Um, And I think there's upside potential for Wright. You know, he's 260 pounds. I think he can be a blocker, but I also think he's kind of an underrated receiver. So it's an interesting dilemma uh, as far as where they're at. I I do think tight end and safety are the two positions for the 49ers that they're probably going to look for some veteran before next week and then also try to fill that need in the draft. But yeah, Robert Tanyan and Bryson Hopkins would be the two 
I mean, I looked at the list and it's not an overwhelmingly. Yeah, this, is, this is the list. It's it available tight ends. Logan Thomas, CJ Uzoma, Uzoma. Who's not uh, bad, but he's gonna cost yeah. you a little bit more. And I think I think Logan Thomas is all right. He's 32. Um he was he's he's some she's somewhat productive. I know he's a little bit injury prone. Robert Tanyan, who I like, who's he's 29, so he's younger. Mercedes Lewis, who's 39. I mean, yeah, he's old. I mean, he's a great blocker. He's a great inline blocker, but I, you know, uh, that's an after the draft kind of an ad. Ross Dwell, Ross Dwelly, obviously, Kenny Yaboa, Jimmy Graham, McCole Pruitt, Tyler Croft, Blake Bell. Um, G, uh, am I saying this wrong? Geoff Swain, G- Jeff Swain, Jeff, Jeff Swain, Jeff Swain. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, not a ton yeah. of, I mean, Jimmy Graham back in the day would have been terrific five years ago, Jimmy Graham. Yeah. You'd be all over it. Um, but, um, now no, not so much. Yeah. I mean, Robert Tanyan's not going to be expensive. He, he played for the bears last season on a, on a $2 million contract. Uh, so I mean, probably, probably pretty cheap for Robert Tanyan. Uh, but yeah, in the draft, I, I've I've seen Jaheim Bell. Uh, I haven't watched a ton of him. I know that I saw, I heard that the coach really likes him. I definitely need to check it. I need to check that out. I know that the Niners are really uh, into some of those late round tight ends that you mentioned, Mason Pline and the BYU Isaac Rex. So um, th- there's potential there. Uh, it's not necessarily a huge need, but there's definitely you know the Niners do go to tight end a lot, so that 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 second tight end will be on the field. Uh, quite a bit and you know Latu who's just looking like a terrible pick right now wasn't didn't even play last year Braden Willis I don't think ever saw the field for the most part so yeah I mean there might be a jumbo receiver that they feel like they could convert to a tight end um you know Johnny Wilson is a I was gonna big... say I was just gonna say that he's six seven two forty or something or yeah I mean seems like every year there's always some, you know, kind of miss, miss position player that you can always take a chance on. It really depends what they're looking for. I mean, are they looking for an inline blocker? Are they looking for somebody who could be flexed out um, and, and help them that way? I mean, you know, there's some sleeper tight ends I mean, in, for sure. I mean, in this, in this draft and, and there's some, there's some decent ones too. So I, I would, I would not be shocked if the 49ers filled that need in the draft. All right. Should we uh, shout out our sponsors before we go to the calls or do we have a, we have a super chat that we want to hit. Oh no, we don't. We're good. No. Um, yeah. We're brought to you by pig and a pickle, pig and a pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week. Get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Go say out to Damon, go say out to Mary, tell them, that Larry Kruger sent you. And we're also brought to you by Marin Auto Glass, MarinAutoglass.com on the web, 415-883-3030. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Check that link in the description. Use the promo code Krug, and they will match you up to your first $100. And let's not forget um, Sharp Corners, Sports Cards, and Collectibles. They're at 205 Cypress Avenue down in Pacific Grove along the Monterey Peninsula. And if you have interest in sports cards or collectibles, uh, give Anthony Catania a call. He's a big fan of the show, and um, he's got a great, great little shop there in uh, Pacific Grove along the Monterey Peninsula, 831-521-5264, the great Anthony Catania. So thanks to all of our sponsors for sponsoring the Krug show. All right. Should we go to Ayush? Is it Ayush Sing Sing Hall or Sing High? Sing Hall. Sing Hall. Oh, you got Ayush. How are you, man? Oh, can't hear you. Can we we got the mic going yet? Uh we can't hear. Are you? Is are we pronouncing your name correctly? Ayush Singhal. Uh, we are, so we know that. Um, Ayush, how's, how's your mic? For some reason, we're not catching your audio. Have you un? Uh, can you un? Uh, unmute yourself. 
Because I don't think you're muted on our end. Let's see. Well, maybe no, he's maybe. not muted. He just uh, my, maybe his Bluetooth is connected to something. I don't know. All right, we'll do this. We'll we'll put him back on hold for a second, and we'll we'll put you back in the green room, Ayush, and uh, hopefully he we can he can figure out his audio. As soon as you feel like your audio is figured out, give us the thumbs up, and we'll bring you back in. Um. Ragnar says mute button, bro. Mute button. Well, it's maybe not as simple as that. Uh, I don't I don't know what that is. Uh let me I'm gonna drop the link in the chat again for people to join. Uh one sec. Oh, he's good. He's good. Oh yo. Ayush, how are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we yeah. can hear you now. Loud and clear. Ooh. Where are you where are you uh checking in from? Where where are you where where are you located? Um, I'm at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. Zach Eady, Saturday. Yes, my yep, Saturday. my daughter's boyfriend is a Purdue alum, and he is he's all fired up about Zach Eady. I'm I'm kind of yep. picturing UConn against Purdue on Monday night. Oh yeah. Me too. I think that's what's probably gonna end up happening. Yeah. And you so are you a man. Niner fan or are you a, uh, how are you finding us? Oh, I'm a Niner fan. I'm originally from Sacramento. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, Mariloma High School. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'm a Sac State guy myself. So I, uh, we have a kinship. So what's on your mind tonight? Yeah. I was just talking, I was just thinking about that, the, the title of this dream, though. I, I definitely think Brandon Ayuk's value is, it's definitely much lower than, than I thought it would be. Um, I think the initial uh, rumors regarding Ayuk were 17 and Zay Jones from the Jaguars. Right. And then 20 and like filler from the Steelers. And I, I don't see that happening anymore. I mean, I think the way the teams are looking at it right now, would you really, even if you get a, a player that's like 80% of Ayuk at 17, you don't have to pay him for the next four or five seasons. I mean, the Jaguars, they're in a, they're in a pretty bad situation. Like we're in a bad situation with our cap, but they have to pay Trevor Lawrence soon. And Josh Allen's going to get paid too. their, their defensive end. So he's going to get paid a lot too. I, I don't think they would be willing to just give up the 17th pick straight up, uh, especially if they can get Brian Thomas jr. Or I don't know. They also need some help in the interior offensive line. I you know, think it's funny. To, it, 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 yeah. it, the teams that I've heard, I've heard Jacksonville, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, New England in a trade back scenario. Um, who was the other team that was mentioned? There was one other team I think that was mentioned. So, you know, there's there's multiple teams that I think could have interest. Now, why would you have interest in Ayuk over a rookie? Simply because um, rookie receivers notoriously, uh, it seems like, take a year, right? I mean, sometimes two years to kind of, I mean, even the great Jerry Rice wasn't very good as a first-year guy. He dropped a lot of passes. So I think that's really the, if you said, why why would teams have interest in Ayuk? Um, one, because... You know he's he's been durable. He's healthy. His he's twenty six. It's pretty sh pretty clear that his best football is coming over the next three years. And a lot of teams, like a lot of teams that need wide receivers, just don't want to wait. You know because they feel like like Trent Balky may feel, hey, if I draft Brian Thomas, and he has kind of an eh year, I chased out my defensive staff last year. I'm probably, you know, Peterson's won a Super Bowl. If we don't have a good year this year, it's probably on me and I'm out. So a guy like, you know, Balky may look at it as, you know, Ayuk is a guy who could save his job. Um, oh, yeah. And and that that's all I can think. Other than that, I think you're right. I mean, um, the, the, the cost controllable rookie receiver um, is probably the probably the way to go. But you're losing out on some present production. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a tough one because the Niners, you know, Ayuk gave them great production. He is um, Purdy's number one weapon, 
But at the same time, when push came to shove and it came playoff time, he got three targets a game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the Jags are in a pretty, pretty tough situation. I mean, you were looking before this season, this last season, like their that division was theirs for the next ten years with Trevor Lawrence and that team. But I mean, the Texans have just they've passed them in a dominant way now. And they're probably desperate. I and mean, if they don't make the playoffs, there's going to be a lot of people losing their jobs in that in that coaching staff and front office. They make a lot of sense. But for me, I think they would probably have, want us to chip in some extra picks if, they, if we do get the 17th pick. Um, another offer that I was looked on on Twitter for was um, we give up a Uke in the 31st pick. And the Jags give us 17, 48th, and then their 2025 20, third round pick. Uh, 17 and 48, but you're trading 31. Mm, I don't know. What do you think, Kev? 17, it was the second number? 48. For 31? Is, yeah, for 31. Wait, I like, like the idea Larry, of making 48. I mean, at this point, what I'm looking at in our draft. We're too low to draft our future right tackle. I don't want to reach for Jordan Moore against Zach Frazier. Those guys are solid players. They're late for they're forties in the forties, in my opinion. What do you so think of Tyler Guyton? I mean, Guyton is a right tackle. He's to not Oklahoma. gonna be there. He's not gonna you be there. So? He's he's gonna go to Dallas, in my opinion. So I, I kinda I'll say this, Ayush. I like um I like that second group. Now I've done a deep dive on these tackles because I've been looking at them for months. Right. So, I, I mean, I've, re- I've really, de- I've really looked at all these guys pretty, pretty, pretty you now across the board. Okay. I mean, I've looked at the top 20 tackles. Alt is a blue chipper. Fuaga's nasty and really, really good. Pashanu is kind of like fool's gold in my mind. He's just a, he's a crazy athlete. He's six, six, he's three twelve. I just wonder how much the guy loves football. You know, it's just it's, yes. when I watch yes. him, he just does, he doesn't look he doesn't look He's like a run terror. block. He's poor in the run game, and he has small hands. And he doesn't he use really his hands, hands well. Yeah. Then there's J.C. Latham, but you know, J. There's a chance that J.C. Latham is a guard. And at, you know, at the NFL level, I love J.C. Latham. I think he's a right tackle, plug and play. But there's a chance he's a guard. I love the kid from Washington, Fatanu. Yeah, you're he's right. He's probably gone. He'll be gone. Um, Amarius Mims looks the part. Like, if you're just looking at pictures of these guys, you'd be like, oh, yeah, draft Amarius Mims. You know, small waist, huge, long arms. Crate. But he played eight games. And why did he play eight games? You know, does he love mm-hmm. to play? I'm, wonder- I'm wondering about that. I love Guyton, but Guyton is a right tackle. I don't think he's a left tackle. And I think he probably goes in the twenties, but I'll tell you, I talked to Trent Williams about him and Trent watches these guys. And he's like, man, I love Guyton. Now Guyton went to his school, Jordan Morgan. I, you know, there's a lot to like about him personally, but I think he's a guard. And I, you know, I, I really, I, you know, he's got 32 inch arms. I would say he's a hundred percent a guard. He's a hundred percent a guard. And, and uh, I forgot which four nine creator likes Jordan Morgan a lot. Jesse. Or, yes, or is it Brad? Yeah, Jesse his lo- point no, was Jesse. Um, Jesse loves he, Morgan. He, you could try him at right tackle, and if he's good at right tackle, you, you got your right tackle. But if not, I agree with him. I think he could become an All Pro guard. I mean, he has his guard he's great in the run game, and he his arms arm size won't be an issue at, at guard, in my opinion. Let's go further down the list. Patrick Paul. When you watch Patrick Paul, he's very high cut. He's six seven three fifteen, and he seems to not have great balance or anchor because he is so high cut, almost like a basketball player. Yeah. Um. So I I love the you know the long arms and I love the athleticism, but I kind of wonder about his ability to plug and play. I think he's more Definitely. of a down the road prospect. The guy that's super intriguing to me is the BYU kid Kingsley Sumatea or Suma uh, Teaya or whatever. Is, I, I can't pronounce his name, but he, you know, at 325 is really intriguing. Um, the Yale kid is intriguing, but he's coming off a quad tear. It's Karan Amagaji? Yeah, Amagaji. I think he's fool's gold, too. I mean, I, I, 
I, he worries me. Now he's I kinda, not dominant. Like, um, not, well, I mean, he didn't even play much this year. Yeah, he's coming out of the true, Ivy League. I watched the Haberman stream. Mm-hmm. Uh, he has someone on the show, and he he made a good point about Karan Amagaji. If you're if you're playing the Ivy League, you got a pancake. Uh, at least you gotta, one. You got to be dominating. every single play. Yeah, every single play, and he's not doing that. No, he's so not physically now, assertive. So, so now we're getting to the guys that are all ranked in the, those are the top guys that are ranked in the top 100. Now we're getting into the next group. And this is where I actually think the value in this draft is as far as that offensive tackle, Blake Fisher from Notre Dame, six, six, three thirty, redshirt sophomore. I think there's some potential there. I like the way he was coached. I like his, his, his smarts. I like his toughness. I thought Christian Jones from Texas looked terrific in the one-on-ones, um, you know, at the senior bowl, six, five, 315 pounds. I think he's a little bit of development needed, but I like, I like what I saw there. Then go further down the list. I love Javon Foster from Missouri. Um, he, he's six, five, three twenty, but he's got the frame to put on another 10 to 15 pounds. He's got incredibly strong hands. And when he gets his hands on you, he's got quick hand. So he gets his hands on you. You're controlled. Um, I, I think he can play left tackle in a few years for Trent. And I think he could play a little right tackle this year. Uh, Ladarius Henderson from Michigan, I think is intriguing. He might be more of a guard, but man, the footwork and the speed and his ability to get out front. Uh, if you watched him in the national semi as a run blocker, I mean, I thought I was watching like Gene Upshaw or Art Shell or one of these guys. I mean, it was, it was amazing. I mean, he, he, he's got the body frame. He's got the speed. He's got the tenacity. He started at ASU, transferred to Michigan, kind of like him. And then the guy that I like, you know, the guy I, I like the most is Garrett Greenfield from South Dakota State who looked terrific in the, in the workout drills. And if you go watch his film at South Dakota State, you're going to see a dominating player. Him and Mason McCormick dominated on the right side of that offensive line. Um, so I kind of like Greenfield. Um, Caden Wallace I, I, is a little stiff, but I kind of like him as a day three guy or maybe a, you know, definitely a day three guy, but early day three. Um, Lau Amea from Utah is interesting. Walter Rouse started at Stanford. I think he's kind of interesting. Gottlieb Ayadezi from Maryland. I think has great potential. Uh, six four, three hundred pound redshirt senior. Uh, I thought his workouts in Indy were very impressive. And the last guy that that kind of opened my eyes is this is the ginger from Wyoming, Frank Crum, who's six eight, three hundred thirteen pounds. He ran a great forty time. Um, I I love that program, Wyoming. I think Crum is pretty tough, but he's also not plug and play. So. I mean, we just Larry, went through uh, a bunch of guys there. Just, just interjecting here. Uh, I see some yeah. names in the chat. Roger Rosengarten out of Washington, or Dominic uh, Pune out of Kansas. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I like the guy from Kansas a little bit. Rosengarten is not bad, but I don't love him. Um, but I mean, yeah. Mel I mean, Kuyper uh, mocked it, mocked into us at thirty-one. Who Pune? Yeah. No. A oh, Rosengarten. Rosengarten. Yeah, I saw that a few crazy. weeks ago. Yeah. Um. You know, and then you, you listen to Shanahan. He's like, well, you know, we're definitely looking for replacements. I mean, we're looking for upgrades. Um, but he also likes McKivitz. So I don't know. I mean, once again, if you ask me, I like I, I like the idea of starting the draft with something besides the offensive tackle spot. And then in that third round area, start to go. Like in my ideal world, we would the Niners would wind up with Zach Frazier, um, Garrett Greenfield, and Mason McCormick. If you got those three guys, I literally at the end of the day would be like, you know what? They've got their O line of the future on the right side. Hey, Larry, so I know uh safety is a big need, at least free safety going into next season. Um what's your idea? What's your thoughts on Tyler Newbin at thirty one out of Minnesota? The min- the Minnesota kid, I think that's too early. I think too I would want to. Tra- I think I would want to trade back. Um, I liked his film, though. I will say that I liked his film. Um, yeah. I just you know, feel he's, like he's 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 athletic. Um, he's six two, about two hundred and ten pounds. Uh, he's a fifth year senior. Um, I mean, there's he he'll hit you. 
You know, I mean, this guy played 55 career games. He set the the program record at University of Minnesota with 13 picks. So that's good. He's also a four-time academic All-Big Ten selection. So I like that. You know, he's smart, and he's got good ball skills. I mean, it's a great place to start right there, um, being smart with good ball skills. He was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, so it's not like this guy just popped on the radar either. He went to St. Charles North High School in St. Charles, Illinois. So I don't, you know, I don't. His brother is a running back for the for the team. Um, his father played college football at Eastern Michigan. I, you know, I like that. The mom ran track at Eastern Michigan. You know, there's a lot to like there. I just, I'm to me, I, I, I you know, I think I would try to, if I could, I would try to, you know, get him a little bit later. Are you a big fan of his? Yeah, I I, I liked his film. I, I think he's. I didn't I mean, really to know me, too much about Kyle Hamilton, but when I saw him play, oh, I thought I thought was he awesome. was the best. I thought I thought he was the best college um, safety that I've ever seen, but that's just me. Um, but, I like some of the other safeties. I mean, Kalen Bullock, Javon Bullard, Cameron Kinchins. Uh, when I watched the film of Dadrian Taylor Demerson from Texas Tech, he was just hyperactive. He was everywhere. I mean, that guy, you know, he's 5'11", 195. He's not the biggest guy. Uh, but, you know, Haberman the other day when we were talking safeties, he really likes Cole Bishop, who uh, played at Utah. Supposedly the Niners have an individual workout for Sione Vaki out of Utah, who's a running back and a safety. I kind of like Kitan Oladapo from Oregon State, just a thumper, just a real thumper. And I love Malik Mustafa. Um, I, I think Malik Mustafa is tremendous. Kenny Logan from Kansas is one of my favorites. Uh, Jalen Carley's, I mean, I don't know if he's a safety because he's 220 pounds. He might be a linebacker. But, man, Carley's can really run and hit. And, um, and P, you, know, you know, we talked about P.J. Jules who they worked out uh, from Southern Illinois. I really like him. To me, if there's a sleeper guy, it's the Oregon kid, Jamal Hill, who's, I don't even know if he's a safety. He might be a linebacker, uh, but he is really, really nice. Yeah. For me, I think the most ideal draft would be, I mean, all these names like Zach Frazier. Uh, I mean, Larry, I think you're muted. Or is that just me? Oh, you're muted. Yeller, you're muted. You're muted. But anyways, for me, the most ideal draft, I think we're just too high up to draft Zach Frazier, Jordan Morgan, all those names. For me, trading back to like the 40s and then getting another third and then potentially moving a third, one of our thirds, and just trading up to like the second round using like one, like maybe two of our forts, we can get three second rounders. We can't hear you, Dad. You're still muted. No, I can't. We can't hear you. Um, did you click your mic? Anyways, uh, do you have a last, last, or did you have a take on the running back that they signed today, Ayush? Uh, I don't know too much about him. <laughs> yeah, no, same. He's uh, he'll be interesting. Wouldn't be surprised if he's cut though. I know Elijah Mitchell is on on the trading block. I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it, that was mentioned. My whole thing with this Stephon Diggs trade is just, you know, what is the trade market right now? You know, for draft compensation, yeah. it seems it seems a lot lower. It seems for sure. Low. I think what's uh, neat was he had knee knee issues. 
For Diggs, I think Buffalo just won him out, man. I, yeah, I, I mean, there was there was turmoil going back to last season where Diggs wasn't going to show up before training camp and stuff like that. But still, I mean, he still has four years left on his deal if he opts in and they get a second-round pick. Four? Really, yeah. four? Yeah, no, he has, uh, he has one year left, and then he has an option, three-year option, that he can, op- he can opt into for around 19 mil. Um, you gonna? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. Um, for some reason there, it was muting and said my mic was wrong. Um, I used to get a final thought before we go to jump to Trevor. Uh, no, that's all. All right, man. Hey, thanks for jumping in. And, uh, next time we go live, we appreciate, you know, jump in again. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. There you go. Kind of an understated guy, kind of low low key. Uh, let's go to Trevor. No, he, Trevor. Knows, he knows the draft though. <laughs> he does know his draft. We go to Trevor. What's up, Trevor? How are you, man? Oh, good, man. How are you guys? Good. Now you've called us before. You're in Arizona. No, Detroit. where are you? Michigan, 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 Michigan. Yeah. That's it. Getting a little bit warmer. Nice, nice. You guys getting ready for the draft? It's coming to Michigan. Uh, yeah, it's going to be in Detroit. I'm thinking about going to that actually. Where are they going to house it there? Is it going to be in the stadium? Yeah, I think it's going to be in Ford Field. Wow, that could I'm be not, cool. I'm not positive, but I think it is, yeah. So how are you feeling? Uh, how are you feeling? What, what, what do you want to talk about tonight? What's on your mind? Yeah, I'm kind of interested in our backfield. I know there's questions about offensive line and how we're going to address that in the draft, maybe in the third round. Um, I'm kind of wondering about our defensive backfield. Um, you know, about two thirds of it, they're going to be free agents after this upcoming year. Yair Brown is going to be the only one signed. So just kind of wondering what you think the Niners are going to do in a team that I compare them to, um, at least a little bit in similarity as the Bills, a really good team that couldn't quite get over the hump. And I know the Bills this year are definitely cleaning house. I know they released a lot of their defensive uh, free agents and, so they're kind of, you know, going to take a step back this year a little bit at least. And um, we're going to see what they do in the draft, of course. Um, so I'm just wondering what you think the Niners are going to do after this upcoming year uh, when it comes to their defensive backfield. You know, it's such an interesting uh, defensive backfield right now for the Niners because uh, at safety, they've got, it looks like they're starters, but no depth. And at corner, they've got tremendous depth but are they looking for that one great player? You know, um, I mean, look at their depth at, at corner. You got Mooney Ward, Lenore, Ambry Thomas. That's three. They just signed Yadam, Chase Lucas. That's five. Darrell Luter. That's six. Um, Samuel Womack. That's seven. Most teams keep five. They've got seven guys right now that are viable going into the draft. So they're deep at corner. They're super thin at safety. I mean, Hafonga's coming off an injury. Uh, Jair Brown's a second-year player. Odom's a special teamer. The other two guys are kind of just, you know, more uh, practice squad guys. So they need, there's no doubt they need a couple of safeties probably in this draft, either one a veteran and one rookie or a couple rookies. And then as far as corner, I could see them look for a corner, um, not necessarily the corner depth, but maybe trade for a corner or maybe a corner in the first round. Um, the guy that I think is terrific is Max Melton from Rutgers. I, I think yeah. Max Melton is really special. He's he ran four threes. Uh, if you look at him, he's super physical. His brother plays, you know, with, uh, with green Bay. Um, he, he was a productive player at Rutgers. I mean, there's a lot to like there. So I, I, I kind of think the Niners either go, you know, corner early and maybe somebody like Melton um, and maybe go safety a couple times, but maybe, you know, later. Um, But I definitely think they're going to draft at least three defensive backs. And I would, my guess would be one corner and two safeties. Yeah. Do you think they extend Demo this year or how do you think that plays out with uh, Lenore? (laughs) Well, he just got that little like kind of stipend from the league where they 
kind of rectify, you know, the guys that are on the rookie contract, but are outperforming the rookie contract. And he got a nice little deal. Now I personally would love to see Lynch step up to the plate and reward this kid and make him happy because I think he's, he's everything you want, but the Niners mode is to wait till the last second and play this thing out. And if you ask me what I think they're going to do, I think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to give him an extension early. I think they're going to play it out, wait, make him wait to the, to the last minute and then pay him at the, at the last minute. I would pay him now because as you said, there's not a lot of, of, uh, you know, you want continuity in your secondary. You got a lot of guys who could be leaving. Uh, he's obviously a guy that has proven himself. He's proven himself outside. He's proven himself uh, in the nickel. I mean, he's he's bulked up. He spent all last year working at the Mamba Center down in L.A. He's a stronger, more physical strike. You know, he will strike you in the run game. Uh, he's also a coverage guy, and he doesn't seem like he's cocky. He doesn't seem like it matters to him if he plays inside or outside. I think he's an invaluable player. I would sign him up. I don't think they will. I think they'll wait. I think it's a good point that you bring this up too, just because, you know, with the whole Brandon Ayuk contract, just the whole cap equation, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what they do with this position because after next season, they have no one on the books except for, or not, they have no one on the roster except for George Odom and Jair Brown and Darrell Luter and Samuel Womack. I so, think Luter has potential too. He had that big rundown in that you, one. Game. So you're losing Charvarius Ward, Talanoa so. Fonga, Diamond Lenore, and Ambry Thomas uh, potentially to free agency. And you can probably extend a, a few of those guys, but you probably aren't going to extend all of them. So some of them are going to have to walk. So it is it is a very important draft for the Niners to get someone in that secondary mm -hmm. because I don't think they can return all those guys. Surf yeah. X11 says trade for Sertan. You know, and Sertan's obviously the you know, it'd be the big fish, but if you could even get Greg Newsom, I mean, you know, if, if, if you could trade a, a day three pick or, a, you know, some, you know, a, some combination of a couple picks uh, to Cleveland for Greg Newsom, I really like Newsom. Yeah, you know, he was good at Northwestern. I think he can play a bunch of different spots. Um, I think he's kind of, he's sitting behind Martin Emerson and Denzel Ward and nobody talks about Greg Newsom, but I think he's a terrific young player. He plays more in the slot, though, right? I believe He's he has. To, he yeah. has, but you know, at at uh, at Northwestern, he could play outside or inside, and he and he's super tenacious. He's physical. He's got a swagger about him. He's super smart. Um, you know, he might be a, a guy to look for. I definitely don't think like it's not like they need like two or three corners. They just need one guy. I mean, I think the Niners. Now we haven't we haven't heard a lot from Lynch or Shanahan since the Super Bowl, but I gotta think that after watching the Super Bowl, that their takeaway is that Trent McDuffie and that um, uh, Legarius Sneed were just totally dominating, and that they need their version of that. And that to me, it's like if you have a if your top three corners are all dominating. Man, you're a force. There's a lot more things you can yeah. do with your defense. I heard Spagnolo talk about it on the podcast uh, with um, uh, with Baldy after the Super Bowl. He's like, a lot of the things that we could do, we could do because we had Trent McDuffie and we had Legarius Sneed. Well, the Niners have two good corners. If they had that third, um, that's the that's you know I think it would be a big one. Well, you uh, know, we'll get, you know what? Uh, the same guy says, would you take Melton at thirty one? I might. I might take Melton at 31. To your um, point about the Chiefs, though, the Chiefs to acquire, um, not Sneed, to acquire, what's his name? Um, McDuffie. McDuffie, they traded Tyreek Hill. Right. So, I mean, that's kind of. Yeah. And, I mean, you, if you extend Lenore, I mean, do it sooner than later, you know, like you were saying. You could do something like you did with um, – with Greenlaw where, you know, you extend them early before they price themselves out. And, uh, who's your guy. Who's the guy that you want to see them go for in the draft? Um, yeah. Is it Bo Melton from Rutgers? I definitely like him. Max Melton. Yeah. Ma Max Melton. I guess his brother's the one that plays for the Packers. Um, yeah, I'd like to see him go corner in the first round. Um, 
you know, I think that'd be a position they could go for. Um, not completely sure where they're going to go. They might take a D tackle. Um, I think we're decent there. I mean, you can always, you know, draft guys, develop them. Um, Seems like um, the Niners, we always talk about all these different positions and then the draft rolls around, they wind up taking a big defensive lineman. You know, yeah. it's a D tackle or a D end. Like this guy says, Braden Fisk. I could see that. I could see Braden Fisk, you know. Yeah. And with uh, the Lions today, how they, uh, they matched the Niners offer for the tight end out of Detroit. Uh, curious to see what Shanahan's plan is this year uh, for his offense. Because I know there's more spread out in the Super Bowl, um, you know, kind of empty backfield. So it makes you wonder, does Shanahan, does Shanahan feel like he needs more weapons? Or where's his mindset going into this year's draft? I know. Yeah. And we haven't had, we've had so little dialogue from them that, you know, it's, um, you know, also it's like how many of these rumors about Ayuk are true. Um, one of them was, Hey, you know, the giants or the uh, Niners may want to wait until, um, you know, they know who's available at in the first round before they, you know, pull the trigger on an Ayuk trade. So obviously it sounds like they're eyeing certain prospects. Uh, it's going to be, you know, it's getting the 25th, 26th, and 27th are going to be really, really interesting. No question about it. Cause there's a lot of unknowns. You know, the Niners could go corner. They could go offensive line. They could go defensive line. They could go linebacker and say, you know what? Dre Greenlaw isn't going to play this year and we need a starter there. So yeah, I'm not it, too there's, confident in Campbell. I'm, I'm not, not either too sure about him, especially in the run game. Uh, you know, he might have lost a step in coverage. So, you know, I don't think he's going to be, you know, a super reliable number two linebacker. Yeah. I'm not a big Campbell fan either. They seem to be, he's, he's felt like, you know, I don't know if you saw his comments. He's like, Hey, I was misused in green Bay. All right. I mean, that's a ballsy thing to say. Let's see if you can show up and, and produce, but I would look at linebackers early in this draft. I mean, there's some good ones late too, but I would definitely, um, I would definitely, you know, take a look. Like if Cedric Gray is there from North Carolina, I'd be all over him because I, I just think that he's, he is the, one of the safest picks in the draft. He's a highly productive, fast, instinctive inside linebacker. That's scheme versatile. He could play the inside spot in a four, three, uh, the, he could play the mic in the four, three, he could play the weak side spot in the four, three, he could play either inside spot in a three, four. I mean, he, there's a lot of teams that should want, uh, Cedric gray, uh, to me, every time I watched him, he was crazy all around the football all the time. And then I watched the senior bowl. And even in the last like five minutes of the game where everybody's kind of just shutting it down, this guy's still flying all over the place, making plays. So. Uh, big fan of Cedric Gray, and we'll see, you know, where if, if, you know, I could see them going for him if he was there in round two, maybe not round one, but I would have no problem to me when you're drafting a linebacker that can make 10, 12 tackles a game and, and can, you can plug right in. I, I don't know that you can overdraft. You know what I mean? I don't know that you can be like, oh, we took him too early. Really? The guy just made 12 tackles for you. So I, I kind of see Cedric Gray as that kind of player. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll be curious to see Jalen Graham this year too. See if he gets some more playing time behind uh, Campbell. Maybe they'll you know divvy up the snaps where he's getting you know a quarter of them. Uh, I'll be interesting to see how that goes. No doubt, Trevor. Good to see you, man. Yeah, Have a great week. We appreciate you. Yeah, Thanks, you Trevor. too. Thanks for having me. There you go, Trevor Matheson, PDX Forty Niners. What's going What's on, up, man? How are you? No, I'm good. I've got Fresno, I've got, uh, Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. That's, that's right, right, Oregon. Right, well, Corvallis. Uh, that's where I go to school. Uh, okay. I actually live quite a bit further north, but uh, I get cheaper rent. I'll, I'll put it that way. If I uh, live further north, so there you go. So, what's on your mind, PDX? I got I got a little bit of a rant. Uh, a rant. I got a rant. Wait a second. And, Hold on a second. You got a rant. So put them in the middle. Uh, uh, it, how's your mic? Can you can you turn up your mic? You're a little low. Uh, 
I don't know if I can. Is this better if I hold it closer? Yeah, yeah it's a little bit better. better. All right. Okay. PDX so, <laughs> Niners is ranting on the I've got a show. Rant. Uh, so, like, one of the things that gets constantly brought up about Brock Purdy is we don't have enough of a sample size, right? Like, that, that's a constant refrain that I hear from a lot of the content creators. And that directly intersects with my background and my understanding of things. And I just want to say, mathematically, we have seen Brock Purdy play enough to have a good sample size and be able to make predictions off of him. Just straight up mathematically. Like, we, we're, we have a pretty good idea of who he is and what his statistical behavior is going to look like in the future, right? And that'll change over time. Uh, that's kind of what statistics is all about, right? Like we don't know the future. There's some uncertainty built into it, but we're trying to predict the future. And that's why we have statistics, right? That's the whole deal of it. Uh, and really, I mean, the larger the sample size, the better. But once you start getting like 25 games in, right, which is about where he's at, and you could, you don't even have to take out his bad games you can uh, start making very reliable predictions. And even more so than that, if we want to examine statistical performance, we can take a sample of all the second year quarterbacks and see where he places there. Um, and so just like, I don't know, for the people that are like, I need to see more of him to know if he's good or if he's Who's good saying good. that? Who's saying that? Let's uh, call them out. <laughs> Too too many people. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call them out all directly. It's a rant. Know. Potentially a Nick rant. Wright. Potentially Nick Wright. Oh, definitely Nick Wright. Definitely Nick Wright. That guy's a jackass. Idiot, so. Yeah, so such an idiot. Yeah, well, I mean, come on. Yeah. You know what? The haters are gonna hate. There's always gonna be people out there who wanna hate. Um, you know to me, this kid was obviously good way way back and a lot of people didn't want to see it a lot of people didn't see it um and you know then we got through you know half a season people didn't see it then it was the injury then it was you know and then all of a sudden you know trey lance gets traded now people are starting to like well he better be good then they held him to a crazy standard uh then the kid met that standard and exceeded that standard and led the team to the super bowl uh, you know, if you, if you don't see it now, you, there's probably all kinds of things you're not, you're missing. You know, you're just, there's just a lot of people that aren't that astute. That's all period. Yeah, I agree. No, it's just like, so I, I'm a, I'm a big statistics guy. I you stats I major. I am a stats major. There we go. And, uh, you know, they talk about that and I, you know, I'll admit, I took me a while to warm up to Brock Purdy. I was definitely in the, like, keep Trey Lance around camp, but, uh, we're, we're talking sample size and we're talking the evaluation based on what we have and what we're trying to project go forward. That's my arena. Like that's, that's what I like. And, uh, you know, I, I think that we've seen enough to be able to predict that he's probably going to be pretty good in the future. The guy plays the, the, the guy plays the position at a really high level. The ball comes out on time with accuracy consistently. He, he goes to the line of scrimmage he understands what he's seeing pre-snap. He makes really quick decisions. He's very, very smart. He's enormously competitive. Where he's none of these, you know, none of those traits are going to make him 6'4, 250. Um, he's got an, he's got enough of an arm. You just heard uh, you know, Andy Reid and and uh, the defensive coordinator in Kansas City basically say, Hey, this kid's really nice. Um I think we all saw on Super Bowl Sunday that the moment wasn't too big. Now, the line wasn't good enough. Shanahan maybe wasn't good enough. Uh, Greenlaw wasn't healthy enough. Uh, the pass rush wasn't fierce enough. The coverage wasn't tight enough. I mean, there are reasons they lost that game. It wasn't Brock Purdy. No. So, so that's what's exciting. Now you've got your core. You've got a young head coach. You got a young general manager. Uh, you got a, an owner that's willing to spend. You got a, a stadium that produces lots of revenue, so you can compete with free agents. And now it's just about: can you win in the draft? You know, can you surround? Can you build a fortress around this guy? 
Uh, can you find him weapons? Can you build up your defense? Um, you know, we're going to find out. I mean, now that the challenge is you're going to have to do it with, um, with him making some good, good coin. So it's going to be challenging, but they got their guy and they know it. Um, and the, the addition of Dobbs kind of proves that they're not really worried about any kind of a competition or anything. They know Brock's their guy. Uh, so it's just a matter of, can they build a, a, can they build a real strong offensive line around them? Can they get them a couple more weapons? Can they build up their defense? Can they fill their holes? And, and it's game on. That's how I see it. Yeah, that's how I see it too. I mean, he's one of, I think, two quarterbacks that's taken Pat Mahomes to overtime in the playoffs and Josh Allen. And his second year stats in the playoffs aren't really too far off of Patrick Mahomes, right? Like, it, it's easy to forget that this is just his second year in the league. I mean, he's playing that well, right? Who do you like, want at 31? Who do I want at 31? I don't know. It's such a crapshoot. It's, it, it's whoever falls there, really. I mean, I want an offensive lineman, but I, I'd rather see them make a move and give up a few of those picks and really go get somebody rather than uh, just just wait for somebody to fall. I mean, in the draft, there's, I don't know, what, like 10 to 15 players that are really, really worth your time, and then the rest are like, you know, I don't know. It's like there, you know, there's big time players there. You just gotta, you just gotta unearth them. I mean, it's, and it's difficult to do PDX. We got to get Kev back to his books pretty soon here. Let us jump. Cause we got one more call before we, before we finish. All right. Talk to you. Thanks PDX. PDX. We got two more calls. Actually two more calls. Look who has checked into the green room. Look who is in the green room, wearing a tank top sporting his tats. Look at that, Mr. Golden Steer Steakhouse himself. Look at that man. It's a good-looking man, Big Mo Easy. But we go to Ryan Crowley. What's up, fellas? What's up, Ryan? Where are you What's calling up, from? Not from Vegas. I got the pizza Vegas. shop out here. Proof you never oh, remember that's me. That's right. That's right. I don't. Yeah. Re- yeah. Now you're not there though. No, I just got home. Yeah, so you're you're it, yeah. you're a guy who 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 screams who jumps in with us while cooking. Normally, now you're cooking at home, but the before you were so. before yeah. you were cooking in the pizza place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always cooking. For some nice, man. Well, what are you chefing up tonight? Yeah, what are, what are we cooking tonight? Dog, some eggs, rice, and vegetables today. The same for me. A little fried rice, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little fried rice for the dogs. Yeah. Nice, the nice. Dogs. What's on your mind, man? Well, I just I think everybody's overlooking I think the significant jump that I really think Brock Purdy is going to have this year. Yeah, I know everybody's so worried about missing this, missing that. I do think even if we keep the offensive line as is, which is not what I want to do, I promise you, it will be a little bit better just because there's another year under their belt, continuity and whatnot, and even a little bit better with Brock. I think Brock's going to take a major step forward just because he's going to actually have an off season. And if he can do in the championship game with Conley and Juwan Jennings without an off season, make those throws, make those looks and lean on these players. I mean, I really think he's kind of got that Tom Brady type where he, you can just throw somebody in there and he's, he's just going to figure it. Like he can gain rhythm with people in, in, you know, in line of fire. He hasn't had an offseason, like a full, you know, first year starter offseason. And he's been to an NFC championship game and a Super Bowl. And he carried us through the playoffs, essentially, in the fourth right. quarter of the Green Bay game and in the, the end of the Detroit game. So I agree. I, I think he's going to have a much a, a big jump forward. And people say, well, what do you mean? What's the jump going to be? I think it's going to be about physicality. I think yeah. he's going to be a little bit stronger. A little bit more explosive, a little bit more, a um, little bit more elusive. I think he's going to work on his athleticism. I think he's going to be just a little I bit agree. more sudden. I agree wholeheartedly, and I also believe him before the snap of the ball is going to be different. I think he's going to know more of what he's looking at. I think he's going to know who's coming, who's not coming. I think he's going to be able to check to the mic. I think he's going to be able to, you know, be able to. I think we're still living in the Jimmy Garoppolo past in this offseason. I think we're still 
Like, Jim, we need offensive – we do need offensive line, but, like, we need defense. We need wide receivers. We need playmakers. We need this. We need that. And we're just – we're doing it as if we still have Jimmy Garoppolo back there. Now, we do need a right tackle and a right guard, possibly a center. But I think we're good with one of them, grabbing one of them for now at least, and just getting another complimentary receiver, definitely another tight end. I think it's okay if our defense slips a little bit. I think it's time for Kyle to, you know, nut up or shut up. It's like it's time for this offense to go, you know, make a run, kind of, you know, carry the team a little bit and carry it because the defense is always beat up by the end of the year because they're carrying the team. I, you know, I love I love the point about the Purdy the Purdy part just because I remember uh, the the Packers series after that Packers series everyone was just talking about Jordan Love and he's only this he's only twenty three or he's only twenty four years old look mm-hmm. what he's done with this Packers team incredible the future is super bright Brock Purdy's over three hundred days or he's over four hundred days younger than Jordan. Yeah. Love. And no yeah, one, no one ever paints him as this guy who can keep improving. It's always he's always hit his peak. It's, it's it yep. feels like every time he's get he gets better, that's his peak. I 100 mm-hmm. percent agree with you. He he's just gonna get better and better, and I think people are gonna be shocked. They're gonna get and imagine if he would have made that boneheaded throw at the end of that in that playoff game that that Jordan Love did, was who's still getting love for being sitting sitting behind Aaron <laughs> right. Rodgers across his body, so, over, like middle of the field, late yeah. in the yeah. middle of the field. That was a stupid throw. I, yeah, no, I mean Purdy. I mean, if Purdy has a little bit, bit better offensive line, he finds Ayuk, who beats Snead, oh, yeah. and wins the Super Bowl. Well, and the other thing right about it days. is, two years ago, NFC Championship game. This year, Super Bowl. Uh, and they fell short. Yeah. I, I think that, you know, just from being around the guy, the guy is driven by all the right things. Yeah. He's not driven by dollar signs. He's not driven by glory. He's not driven mm-hmm. by anything other than winning the ultimate game. Yeah. And I think he's going to get there. I think he's going to keep knocking on that on that door. Obviously, there's a lot involved in putting together a football team top to bottom. But uh, who do you want, Ryan, before we jump, who do you want on draft day? Who's who's the guy you want at 31? In I want to I want to trade. I kind of want to trade Ayuk to the Bills. Okay. And package both of those to get up to maybe 16 or 17 if you can. And then draft a big right tackle, left tackle. I don't know if that's possible. I'm sure somebody will take it, possibly. Uh, who we were supposed to trade, I, try to trade IU to, to the Jaguars. Maybe they'll take the 27 and the 28th or the 31st up to the 17th. Just, just grab a big mauling tackle. I haven't really done too much in the draft this year. I've been working 17 yeah, hours. But you're, you're basically saying get the big right tackle yeah, and 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 set set Brock up for success that way. Yeah, imagine if we can run to the right with Brock now, with, with uh, Christian McCaffrey or Mason, we can run to the right. Now Brock isn't worried about the right side, and now he can just diagnose what's coming, what's not going. And now, like if you're not blocking the right side of the field as well as we should, and we can't run it that way, it kind of limits crossing routes to that side of the field or the opposite because it's just like that. That having that in the back of your mind is like it just like. I feel like it messes with you mentally where you're just kind of always focusing to the left. You want to get it out to the left quick. You want to crossing to the left, um, end arounds to the left. We never really run Debo end arounds to the right. Like it's, it's just always off the left side off Trent. So if you can open that up to the right side now, that's going to open up the middle of the field for his throws even more now. Cause you don't have DB sitting around waiting for, or linebackers not worrying about a run to the right. You know, I feel like it'll open up a lot for Brock and make his reach more defined. I think your assessment of the Niners is probably in line with the majority. Yeah. Uh, the majority of people were, were, are at this point are like, you know what? Um, Colt McKivitt's a nice guy, but we want a, a big time right tackle. Um, yeah. uh, I'm okay with going a couple other positions first and then finding a right tackle, letting McKivitts go this year and having a good backup behind him. But I hear you. I hear you. I think there's a lot to be said for you know, filling that need, you know, yeah. instead of just sitting there and going, well, sort of kind of fill that need, but he's, um, he's operating with half an offensive line and he carried us to the Super Bowl. I yeah. mean, I mean, show up the right side. Now you have, now you don't have to worry. He doesn't have to worry as much. Now you can run and now you have more dynamic, dynamic options, you know, within the flats. You, I, they hardly ever throw to the flat on the right side. Oh, I know. Oh, you know, so they, the and they run left constantly. Side, yeah, a linebacker, a DB on that side, you're just looking for the crosser going to the left, or you're just sitting on your route. 
you know, in all, you know, in all, in all essence. So for the run, if you're running to the right, they're just going to come down and, and, and make a play anyways. Linebackers Rye, good, really worry about. Rye, let us jump, but good yeah. stuff, man. Have a great night in Vegas. Thanks, Enjoy man. your dinner. Thanks, Rye. Right. Thanks, Rye. Appreciate you. Big Mo Easy. What's up, Big Mo? You're, uh, muted. You, you're muted. There I go. Hello. There you go. What's Gentlemen, going on, man? How, are how are you guys doing? Welcome to April. Right. Right. Bro, is everybody it warming up, about... is it warming up in Vegas? Oh, yeah, it's getting warmer. I mean, you know what, though? We're in for a little cold spell again, which is kind of weird, but, you know, hey, it's Vegas weather, man. It'll be cold in the morning, hot in the afternoon. I was surprised how cold it was when we were there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it, it was cold, 40. I mean, it, it was 40 in the daytime, but it, it wasn't like California 40 where it's like, you know, in the middle of the day, it's like 60. It, it was like 40 all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember we were recording a we were recording a video on the top of the parking lot of whatever the you know wherever the media thing was. The and Mandalay, hand, yeah, the Mandalay, Mandalay Bay, yeah, for because we wanted to get the good views, and my hands were going numb holding <laughs> that camera. <laughs> so I hope people appreciate the view because my hands were going numb for that video. <laughs> that, so that, big hey, what's on your mind? That's why the crew show do so good, man. That's why the crew show do so good, man. Because Kev be laying it down for the. For the show, man. You know what I'm telling you. Right. <laughs> Kev has done tons for the show this year. No question. We're going to keep him around. Uh, what's on your mind, Big Mo? What's, what are we talking about tonight? All right, fellas. You ready for this one, man? Here comes the rant, bro. Here comes the real, real rant, uh, man. Let's rant. go. I'm in the middle. You ready? Rant. Move in the middle. You rant. In, you the middle, in the middle, baby. Let's go. You ready? You guys ready for this one? I am. All right. We got Patrick Taylor out of Memphis, right? Uh, big back, 6'2", 217. Okay. Uh, why are we bringing in backs? Why are we bringing in backs? I understand out of Memphis, he played with Tony Pollard. So I guess I, I can see what they're trying to do with maybe, you know, you got Christian McCaffrey and this guy. But, dude, you know me, man. I'm a Jordan Mason fan, bro. And we're not even using him. So what happens with Jordan Mason now? Does he get kicked to the curb without ever getting a shot? You know, why are we bringing in a back that we'd be bringing in backs and then we send them to Philly? We sent him to the curb. We sent him to wherever. I don't even know what the hell's going on with that. But I what mean, are you? What are you suggesting? Are you suggesting you think there's going to be a trade? I mean, it's going to be either Elijah Mitchell or Mason. You know what I'm saying? That's what I feel. I mean, why we got? I mean, why we got so many backs in the backfield? You know what I mean? And then you know Shanahan, he wants to draft a back. You know what I mean? So it's just like Big Mo, just to just to you know calm your nerves here. In my opinion, I don't even know if this guy makes the team. Like, I don't even know if this guy I, – I don't think this guy in any world should be above Jordan Mason or Elijah Mitchell. Like, he, And that's how I feel, too. He's just well, a guy. Maybe a camp back is what Kev's saying. Yeah. Yeah, camp body. He may be. I just that's, get frustrated with that, player. man. I don't, I don't know. get frustrated with that. I'll be like, bro, you guys bringing in backs. I'm like, bro, you Jordan Mason, baby. We oh, got I, know. I, mean, I, I was getting frustrated at the end of the year. It's like, you know, come on. I mean, I mean, can can we see Jordan Mason in any of these games? Does McCaffrey have to lose a leg before we see Mitchell or Mason? How did um, they not get a run in the Super Bowl? How did nobody get a run in the Super Bowl? Like I like that still blows my mind to this day. You know what I mean? Like, I know everybody got off Shanahan, but you know what, dude, bro, Shanahan, you really fucked that up, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, excuse my language, but you know what I mean? Like, bro, you you really screwed the pooch on that one, brother. You know what I mean? It's like, come what, on. What? I, you mean the overtime thing? Not even the overtime thing. It's like, dude, you know what? If we would have just kept Brandon the ball in the third quarter, we wouldn't have had to go to overtime. Let's be real. You know what I mean? I'll tell That's you the one that I think about over and over again is they were third and four, and if they had just had the mindset to be like the Eagles um, and run on third down, get to fourth and short, and then run again, and instead they passed and it's like, you know, I don't know. To me, if you if you look at Shanahan's career, he's a great coach, but he's gotten pass happy in some big situations. And I just think if he got a little bit more a little bit more grit, a little bit more run oriented, that probably would have probably would have been the answer. Well, you know, the joke I make is like I tell all my friends, I said they need to put a, uh, you know, one of them uh, red buttons. What was that? What was that company that had the red button? The, uh, the easy button, the easy button. 
<laughs> staples, I think it was. Staples. Staples. Yeah. staples I think yeah. it was Staples, yeah. So they got to put a Staples button at, for somebody, right? And then they got to put a little buzzer on Kyle's body, like a little electroshock thing. So when he starts getting out of crazy, you know, start not making the plays right and doing whatever he got to do, then his dad going to hit that buzzer like, bzz, bzz, yo, yo, man, you better check yourself. You reckon yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to see them run it twice. If they had run it twice, I really think they would have gotten it done. But what can I say? What can we say? Hey, wait till next it. year. It's a wait till next year, right? Who do okay, you want so on draft day? What what's your who's the guy you want in the first round on draft day? You know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't even looked at the draft yet. You know what I mean? My boy Sean, my brother, adopted brother, is actually gonna be in Detroit for the draft. You know nice. what I mean? So yeah, um, he's going to fill me in on what we got going on. But honestly, like, I haven't really looked at it, man. I've been so busy with my work. You know what I mean? He, you guys know what I'd be doing. So. Oh, I know. You're, yeah. you're a busy it seems man. Like there's, there's two ends of the spectrum. There's people that's like, I haven't looked at one one prospect. And then there's the people that are like, I've looked at every single person in the draft twice. <laughs> well, you, well, you know what? I've, I've never uh, I've never really been that person to, like, try to project who we're going to get. Because you know what, man? I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm not that dude. Like, I get the shit wrong. You know what I mean? I just put oh, in there. Yeah. Well, man, I just put, it's, it's I just put it. No one gets it right. You know? No one gets it right. You know, I don't really get it right like that. But what I do do is after we pick up these players, then I do my research on these players and see how they're going to benefit our team. So I really do get into it that way. You know, but and I think a lot of people are like that. They wait till after the draft and they're like, who did we get? And then they're immerse themselves in it and, and they get ready for training camp. I think that's that's kind of the mode. The one benefit uh, I'll add, the one benefit go ahead. to the one benefit to, uh, I mean, not everyone can ha has the luxury of doing this, but the one benefit, from my opinion, and looking at all the, all the entire draft class, is that it gives you a better understanding of the league, in future years. Like, like you, you, you remember guys like four years later who are just random backups because you looked at them like in the draft. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Best. yeah. No, no question. That's how I do it. I try to learn these guys as they come into the league so that. I got a good handle what I'm talking about them going forward, but I'm doing this, you know, big Mo. I'm doing the, I'm not, I'm not putting people's cars together and, and doing what you're doing. This is, this is what I do. So, you know, uh, I, if we, if I need cars detailed and, and, uh, and I, you know, I want to make major changes to my car. I go to big Mo when I want, you know, when people want info on the draft, they come to yours truly, hopefully. So that's the mindset. Big Mo, we got to get Kev to study in about 10 minutes. You got one last thought on the way out? Yeah, man. I just want to say, man, I'm just glad to be back on. You know what I mean? I took a break the last couple of weeks, man. I had some stuff going on with the shop, man. It's been real busy. You know what I mean? That warm weather come up and, man, it's get hectic. You know what I mean? But I, dude, I'm just glad I had time to get on here with you guys, man. You know? No sweat, man. You, it was man. good. It, it's good to see you. And thank you again for a wonderful dinner in, at the Super Bowl. And uh, we will do it again. We will do it again. Hey, we definitely, we definitely doing it again, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, man, if I come up to Cali, pig in the pickle, baby. There you go. <laughs> it's on me. I don't hey, know if Kev, it's, I don't know, quick. I don't know if it's the golden steer, but pig in a pickle on yours truly. Hey, that's all good. Hey, Kev, real quick though, man. I'm glad you got the curls out, bro. Rock them shits. You know what I'm saying, bro? It looks <laughs> good on you. Hey, Thanks, man. Rock, Thanks, them man. You, rock them while you can, bro. Rock them while you can, bro. <laughs> Appreciate it. Big Mo, have a great night. You got a final word? Uh, not nothing much, man. I just love you guys. Let's go Niners, bro. And hope everybody out there in uh, Ninerland has a great evening, man. Thank you for having me on, bro. Uh, I appreciate you guys always. Big, 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 big Mo, easy. All right, should we finish with Jamie down here? Yes, we'll finish with Jamie. Jamie, how are you, man? Jamie, doing well. How are you guys? We're doing good, man. Where are you calling from, or where are you? Uh, where are you located? I'm up uh, just above Vancouver, Washington. No, Vancouver, Washington, not Vancouver, BC. No, yeah, Washington. Up by Portland, kind of, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's I'm on your mind, man? Are you a big Niner and... fan? Yeah, I've always been a Niner fan. Awesome. Ever since back in the day, I couldn't believe they let Rice go. It, it, first, they did Montana like that, and then they and then they let Rice go, and I was like, oh, man. So I had to walk away for a bit, but. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't think they'd ever let Rice walk. You know. Oh, I know. Well, they just the didn't. Way, the way the the way the world works. So, what's on your mind tonight, man? What, Wait, what are you fired just up on about? The, just on that Rice thing for a sec. It, it is odd to see Rice in another uniform. I was watching the Patriots, yeah, talk yeah. the Dynasty, 
And in one of the episodes, they have they show the 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 tuck the tuck rule game. And yeah. That, that, that game, you see Jerry Rice in a Raiders uniform, and it just looks so weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that that rule was, dude. They should have won that game too. I was rooting for him. You know, yeah. I had to follow him and freaking root for the Raiders. It sucked. I, I got a couple things I got to bring up here. Um, Go for it. Um, that that receiver that just got traded from the Bills. What's his name? I'm having a, like a brain fart. Stephon um, Diggs. Stephon yeah, Diggs. Diggs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody's talking about the value on Ayuk going down because of that trade, but Diggs has been working on getting himself out of there for like. Uh, what two years now two and a half years so uh, throwing tantrums on the sideline pushing the coach you know i mean they had they had to get him off the team so they probably took you know the best that they could get and, and a place that he wanted to go so he wouldn't cause another scene about something else you know I that's mean, what I'm, what, I, you're, I running, that you're begging to get away from josh allen really yeah Really, but hey, that kid, that kid down there, he's no joke. He was the best quarterback last year. I was telling Rumble that the whole time. I'm like, dude, he almost beat Georgia single handedly. And uh, are you talking about uh, the receiver for uh, uh, D'Amico down there? Um, that's Dang, no. what, what's no, the, the, the quarterback? I mean, oh, 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 oh. yeah, Stroud. the kid Stroud, CJ Stroud, Stroud, oh, CJ yeah. Stroud. Yeah. Yeah. No, I watched that game where he was in the playoffs going against uh, Georgia. And that was, he was the only one that held right with him and then lost at the end. At the very end, um, I think it was like a one score game or something. And uh, he didn't have any of his receivers or nothing. He was just throwing to nobodies. And after that, I'm like, dude, this kid's for real. This is the, this is the best quarterback coming out. And I knew it right then and there because Georgia was. There was all the, co the cognition testing thing. Yeah. Where he scored low, and everyone was making a huge deal yeah. of that. That kind of just yeah. eliminates that as a. As yeah, a that's, that doesn't make no sense. It, it, those guys took that little skinny kid, and look at him now, Bryce down Young. there in Carolina. Yeah. 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 But I mean, but I, I never, I never liked Bryce Young. I don't think a lot of people that were really no. in the draft liked him. He's just too small. I mean, here's yeah. the thing. Nobody ever talks about this, but it is the, the hardest thing to do is to handicap the quarter, how good these quarterbacks are yeah. on these freaking dynasty college teams. Yeah. Jaden, Jaden Daniels. Is he great? Or is LSU great? I don't, think so. you know, I don't think so. Bryce young is, is he great? Or was Alabama great? Matt Leinert was supposed to be awesome, but he played at USC. It's really hard to, yeah break down the quarterback versus what's going on around the quarterback. And to me, it's really hard to evaluate quarterbacks on awesome college teams because yeah. they, there's no well, adversity. Well, I mean, if they, if they do something like uh, Strout did and go up against a better team with uh, your weapons gone and then do what he did, then you could say, Hey, that that's a point for him. You know, th this kid's good. But if they if they're just you know if if they're going against nobody's you can't like any of these quarterbacks coming out this year I didn't see nothing like that not even McCarthy like Penix Penix did pretty good but I I don't I don't know about him either he, he's got injury concerns you know so even if he did all right he, I, I don't like well, any like of them. every every year these these awesome teams have highly rated quarterbacks. Next year yeah. we're going to be we're, we're going to be told that Milrow from Alabama is special, and I don't I don't is he I don't know I mean or is Bama just loaded? Yeah, he's a one year guy and he's on a loaded team. Every yeah, every quarterback Bama's had for the last four quarterbacks or three or four quarterbacks has been a top you know a first round draft. Yeah, pick. yeah, and and they and they haven't been doing anything with their team, even though they got one of the best teams. They haven't been going anywhere. Like they missed the playoff. No, they didn't. No, they didn't miss the playoffs this time. They were in, right? No, it was uh, uh, Michigan, Michigan, Washington. Yeah, they Bama, didn't. Um, uh, no, they, they, they missed they, out. No, no, they, they missed out. They, well, they, no, played, they, played, they played Michigan in the first Bama round. And Texas, oh, right? that's right. That's right. Yeah, it, was, it was Texas, Texas, and Washington, and, uh, and Michigan and Georgia was the one who missed out, right? Well, and Georgia, yeah, Georgia, and Georgia would have won the whole thing. I mean, that's the other yeah, I mean, thing. They have been a juggernaut over there. That's why I'm so big on uh, McConkie. Even though he's only got two touchdowns, 
every time I've seen that kid grab a ball, it's been clutch. Need yeah. the first down. He's grabbing the ball. And he's it got the kind of a weird. Team. He is kind of a weird prospect in that if he was so clutch, why did he only score twice all year? Yeah, why? I don't understand that. But well, because they got that know. big tight end and they got other weapons too. I don't know what other receivers they got coming out next year. But he I know he very, wasn't the only fast, guy grabbing the ball. Quick. He he creates yeah, space. He, he's really quick. He's fast. Yeah. I, I just seen him. I seen a, a clutch gene in that kid. That's why I'm like, hey, he's four three. He can get down the field and, and he doesn't drop the ball. He catches no. the ball and he's quick. I think and we still need a guy. We still need a guy below four four that can get down the field and lose somebody. So uh, the Purdy has somebody to throw to. How like would you feel? If the, how would you feel if the Niners replaced Ayuk with McConkey? <sighs> I wouldn't feel great about it because no, Ayuk is uh, no. I I want to keep Ayuk, but draft somebody like McConkey so that we got that guy in case we do have to lose somebody. You know. Yeah, I, I, McConkey. There's that. There's that kid out of uh, Florida. He's pretty good, but he's a four four. Here's all. And there's, yeah, and then there's uh, Mitchell from uh, uh, Texas. Adonai. He's pretty bad. He's yeah. pretty nice. And then Xavier Worthy ran four two four or whatever he ran. Yeah, but they, they say he's not good at route running or nothing like that, and he's too light. You know, yeah, I mean, very, I really, he's 164 I really pounds. want that speed. Yeah, yeah, I want this. We all want the speed, but I don't know if I would go that far. Yeah, because one yeah. hit and you're done. You know, one hit yeah. your season's over. As crazy as it sounds, of of all the of all the the guys that compare to Ayuk, I can't believe you're saying this. I I would say McConkey actually compares to Ayuk in a sense, where he's yeah, really he's, fast and he 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 breaks as fast as Ayuk. Like he yeah. breaks, he can get in and out of a break like that quick. He can get open anytime he wants to. He's not That's the what I'm same. Saying. He's anytime. not the same length. He doesn't have the same length and like kind of like athleticism in a way that IU has, but he can snap his brakes as fast. As I don't can. see a guy who separates the way you would think a guy that runs that 40 time would. That's what concerns me. Yeah. I, don't I don't see a lot of separation, I, but, I, but I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of college. I've seen it a few times. He, I watched it when he played Oregon and Oregon state is the games that I watched mostly. And I, uh, on Oregon, he just demolished him in the first quarter. I mean, it was over like him in that tight end. I, actually, I think the tight end was out that game. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Powers, pretty special tight end. For sure. Yeah, he's really good, that tight end. But Jamie, we ain't got a shot to get in. Jamie, we're, we're seven minutes over. We got to jump, but have a great night. Is there a final thought you got for us? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to try to open my own channel one of these days here. You should. Um, Keep calling. Yeah, I'm, in. Try, I'm, I'm disabled, so I ain't got nothing better to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, all all it takes is an opinion and some passion, and you're there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All, all, right, right, all right, bro. Appreciate you, Jamie. Checking in. A couple supers before we jump. Fast says Bur uh, Burberry Palo Alto wants to give you a cha a, a champagne toast. Hmm. I'll is think a champagne what toast. is Burberry Palo Alto? Is that like the store or like? Not really sure. Okay. I'll take a, cha a, a, cha a champagne toast. I like a little champagne. Yeah. Uh, Tobin Urs says, poor draft decisions and player development are catching up. Which is more to blame? Great top-line talent, but nobody ascending in depth is lacking. Um, I wouldn't say it's that bad. I would. It, it seems kind of, yeah, it seems a little exaggerated. That's a little sky is falling. <laughs> you know, don't you think? Nobody is ascending. Depth is lacking. There, there's definitely positions, but I mean... I mean, I, I think you might be a little tunnel focused on the nine. Well, the they do need to have a big draft. We'll just say that. Um, and Fred says, Larry, will you be doing some baseball shows soon? Yeah. I'm watching Giants Dodgers right now. This is Dodgers, the game right now. I haven't checked. Dodgers are beating the Giants 5-3 at Dodger oh, Stadium. Jorge Soler is up in the eighth with two outs. Giants down to their final four outs. Uh, they, it looks like they're going to get swept. But the Dodgers are just loaded. Oh, there we go. Goodbye. Solaire. Jorge Soler. My God. Woo. That thing was deep. <laughs> Left center. Smoked it. <laughs> Kev, what did you think of that bomb? Did you see it? I didn't see it. Oh, my God. Let's find it on Twitter. Jorge Soler just hit one to the moon. Probably went last row. 
left center. Just crushed it. Last the last row. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see where it lands. Definitely left center. Someone's definitely in the bleachers. Four fifty three. Is that possible? Let's see where it lands. Um, it landed. Yeah, I would say in the last two or three rows. Look at this. No, that's it out. I was going to say Conforto has gone back to back. 5 4 Dodgers going to the ninth. Kev, you got a final thought before we end our show? Uh, check out our socials. Check out our TikTok. We're trying to grow our TikTok right now. I'm not sure if any of you guys use TikTok. Uh, we have our Instagram. All that stuff's linked in the bio. We're putting out good stuff. Uh, we made a put out something today about one of your favorite draft pro uh, prospects, Michael Hall Jr. from Ohio State, the defensive tackle. Yes, love that. Put that out. Uh, we're just putting out some cool stuff on there. Check out the audio version of the podcast. Um, but yeah, no, that's uh, that's all I got. Good show. A uh, couple in the chat here. Tom Pierce, who's a member, says, what about the Warriors? Last year, you guys did one after every game. Last year, they were good. If they go to the playoffs, we'll 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 do post games. Right now, the Warriors bore me. I, I watch them, but I mean, there'll be a post game for pretty much every post, or there'll be a yeah, there'll be a post game for every postseason game. Yeah, if they go to the playoffs, we will do a post We'll do a post game show for every playoff game for sure. Last year, we kind of abandoned the Giants for the Warriors. In see, that's the thing. I'm a football guy, so we're ta we're talking football most of the year. But then we get to April, and then I'm talking draft. All right, so now once the draft ends, it's like, well, what are we going to talk about? We can talk about the Giants, or we can talk, or we can talk about the Warriors. And last year, when the Warriors were going on a playoff run, we talked about the Warriors. We kind of ignored the Giants. This year, the Giants, I think, are far more interesting. I'll talk more about the Giants. Uh, but once again, as Kev said, if uh, the Warriors go to the playoffs, we will do a post game show for every single Warrior playoff game without without fail. Um, that is going to do it. Oh, one uh, one last thing, I got a, I got a call from Baller who hasn't been on the channel since uh, since the you know Super Bowl. Maybe can't I can't remember the last time he came on, but we're going to be doing you and him are going to be doing a. Draft uh, preview, a, a draft preview, preview hosted by Baller, but also streamed on the Krug Show, and Baller's put together, I guess, some pretty good draft profiles, uh, with some cool overlays. So that be a, that'll be a really cool uh, stream. So keep, uh, keep, keep on your the eyes, lookout for that. Yeah, keep the lookout. Keep on the lookout for that stream coming up. Sounds good. Uh, once again, thanks to all of our sponsors. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle. Thanks to all of the uh, callers. Thanks to people who did the super chats. Um, and thanks for supporting the Krug show. We got 40,000 subs and we're putting out good content on a regular basis. And we're fired up to uh, put out more in the, the days, weeks and months and years ahead. So Kev, have a great night in Cal Poly. Thanks to everybody. And the last thing I would say is peace. Yeah, never met a man I've been scared of Careful, you won't get exactly what you 